Good morning everyone. I am out in the garden for the first time in so long. I've come outside partly because I have lots of work to be getting on with out here but also because we're having our electrics done inside so it's a good time to get out into the garden and do something that I've been meaning to do for so long because I've just let this vegetable patch run, run wild because we've been doing so much renovation in the garage and the kitchen and been busy with work and stuff. Um, we had to take some time off a month or so ago. Um, this has happened, which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I need to clear it out with the view of planting some bits for next year. So there's certain things that we can plant in the winter and I want to get started so that um, the veg beds are clear but the main goal is just to sort of do some tidying i'm not gonna go wild or anything this was our herb vegetable bed and i think today i will just cut it back a little bit but i look at the bees they're loving this i think this was a pineapple sage but it's so beautiful like it's this beautiful red flower and the bees are enjoying it um so i'll leave him there i'm gonna just you know get rid of all the weeds essentially um and then next year or at some point i want to move the herbs closer to the house in some um pots because i found myself not coming here often enough because it's down here and i think it's just more worthwhile than being closer this is all the strawberries which we need to fix um and yeah um this was potatoes and stuff so i need to just just calm it all down and this guy the nasturtium has spread so obviously he was on this bed and he spread all the way over here all the way over here yeah but all of it is just a bit out of control we put loads of compost on here that we found in our compost bins also i'm so in love with my new top me and my friend went to um a really lovely event on saturday for the brand naked generation who are a cornish brand and they make beautiful clothing you've probably seen one of the dresses i have from them hundreds of times because <laughs> i live in it and um, they're all ethically made and they get beautiful printed fabrics from india and i'm just in love it was the most lovely event and it was really nice to meet the owner laura and it was just so wholesome and i bought this um top which has like the most lovely collar and then i got also a dress and i just feel like i'm living out my cottage core dreams in this top <laughs>
is reminding me of why the hell I haven't done this just as I've gone on because it doesn't take much time at all. Um, I have, like I said, some little terracotta pots inside and lots of these have gone quite big. So I'm gonna take just a little bit and plant it inside so that I have access to it just, you know, when I'm in the kitchen. I have my cuttings of chive and oregano. I did them very haphazardly. Mmm, smells lovely. And I'm going to buy some basil and thyme as well to fill some other pots. And these are just gonna live in the kitchen. I got these little pots from Etsy. So I do need the base to them so that obviously when I water them, it doesn't go everywhere. Um, I've got a bigger pot here and some more pots here. And I wanted to show you the Promosa growable calendar and I'm going to plant some of the seed paper. So this is such a lovely idea. I just think this could be the best Christmas present and I'm actually going to get this I think for some friends and family because it's just so lovely. Um, and basically what it is is 12 months of um, certified organic seed paper. So you open up to a page and it's got what it is that month, um, some information on it which is nice. Um, and then the seed paper is here, as you can see, and you just simply tear it out and plant it, which is just so cute. And then it has all the information about how to look after it. So the planting depth, the temperature, um, when to plant it, and then notes, which I find very useful because when I was doing gardening last year, I wasn't taking notes often enough and I would forget things. So it's kind of nice that you can make some little notes there. So I'm gonna plant November, technically cheating, because this is a 2022 calendar, but I wanna show you um, how it works. Um, and November is winter rocket, so it's also known as Herb Barbara, gives you the real sailor feeling. In the past, many sailors felt ill with scurvy, a disease caused by severe vitamin C deficiency. Um, one of the consequences is tooth loss. The sailors obviously had no desire to suffer that, therefore they prepared well before their voyage. Because of its high vitamin C content in its leaves, they took this herb on board. Very interesting. So I'm gonna tear this out, plant this, and it gives you information here on how to plant it. So planting depth is about 0.2 centimeters, so quite shallow. Temperature 12 to 18 degrees Celsius, and germination time eight to 10 days. So I'm gonna write a little note in the note section of when I planted it and everything else. And then it needs to stay indoors until February, and then we can move outdoors in March and I love Rocket, so I'm excited to nibble on that. I just think it's beautiful, so go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. I do have a discount code, it's Madeline10, so you can go and have a look at this calendar, which is the Growable calendar, and they also have the Jack of All Trades, which I think is more suited for if you're a total beginner. This has some sort of different variations of plants, which makes it quite interesting, and I think the Jack of All Trades um, is perfect if you're willing to learn about the basics of gardening, but both work for beginners too. But yeah, go check out Promosa. They've got a um, lovely thing going on, and also, I think they have a blog. If you open up the first page, you go to this website or you can scan it here and register and join the friends with plants community you get basically exclusive content so yeah really really cool so let's get planting
Vinyasa and Tilta Gautam. Here is my little kitchen garden, which I intend on having all the time here. I might move a couple of these pots because I'm kind of thinking this windowsill because it's got the um, worktop back there. It makes it really easy to wipe down. And I'd really like, like I mentioned, to have some thyme. So I'm gonna get some thyme, some basil and some mint because they're things that I use all the time. Ha ha ha, time. <laughs> and yeah, have a few more things and we can use this space also in the new year to um, grow some seedlings because it's right by the window. But I will have to update you on the little Promosa winter rocket. I realise I wrote rocket on the wrong end of the stick, but it does what it, you know, I, I'll, I'll know what it is. And I've written a little note in the calendar when I planted and I'm really excited about doing this. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And we're gonna to have to see how they do. I put a couple in the small one. Um, I put a couple in the small one, small one, like I showed you, and then some in here. I planted them really shallow. And I also made the, the seeds facing up because it's kind of like the thinner side of the paper. I'll have to update you in the future how they go. I'm a bit nervous because I think I've got the wrong compost. I think it'll be okay, we'll see. I'm gonna water them now. That's definitely not how you fill it up. Alex! <laughs> are we going to be here all day or are you going to actually fill it up? I did it. No. Did it actually work that way? Well, some of it went in. <laughs> With our new tap. Can you just buy our new tap? How exciting. Oh! Right, okay, that's <laughs> a bit of a tricky, tricky one to um, fill up. Right, let's water the... Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, I just realized I need to, I need to put something under these pots. I said that, there's nothing under them. Okay, I'll go get a little plate to put under them. I'm using my very beautiful blue plate, which I will not be using in the future. Um, we'll have to go out today and get, this actually looks kind of nice. Maybe we can find a long one in the garden center to put it on. That one hasn't got a hole, so yeah. <laughs> I need some little ones. I know you can get them in garden centres, so we'll have to just get some today. And I trimmed the chives, so we've got loads of chives over here in the little sieve to um, to enjoy. Mm, but look, we should make some um, chickpea tuna and put some chives in it with our food processor. Now it's out. It smells really fresh. I know, and I thought um, I was saying how it'd be good to have some mint and basil, and also thyme, so you can have fresh herbs all the time. I'll leave the discount and the link to the calendar down below, but Madeline 10 gets you a discount. And yeah, I'm gonna be ordering some um, for Christmas for family and friends. So if you're watching, stop watching. <laughs> no, it's a bit late. It's a bit late. Um, I won't say who, but I'm definitely gonna order one. And I think, don't you think it should go up here? I was thinking um, this could be next year's calendar and we could yeah. sit it all here. Or here. <laughs> yeah, perfect. We've got the little hook, so yeah, we just need to find a little nail. Alex has been patching up a hole. Where is it? Here. So Roxy can't escape anymore because she kept on escaping through this hole. You can't escape anymore, Rubber Lob. You're not allowed down there. Hey, Bobby. You're not allowed.
So one, two, three, looking better. And um, I think I'll stop and have a break and then maybe do a couple more. Bobby, stay there. Stay. 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 Good girl. Good girl. I know it's much easier to just use one of those. Oh, it's a robin. Do you see the robin? Hello, Mr. Robin. Oh, look, he's on my tripod. Alex is a robin on the tripod. She's trying to escape. That's the spot that you escaped last time. You can't get through anymore, little one. <laughs> Too bad. Oh no, what's she going to do? Oh no, Robbie. <laughs> I love that her face fits perfectly in. I know that you can use a hoe um, like a trowel sort of thing to clear weeds much quicker um, but I'm trying to do the whole no dig thing where you don't disturb the soil and I think in an ideal world if you were doing no dig you would be removing the weeds um, regularly so you'd be sort of staying on top of them and eventually basically after plucking them out enough times they just give up um, and die. Got mud on my face? Uh, obviously I haven't been taking care of it down here so the weeds are kind of out of control and I'm by no means an expert whatsoever because I, when I was younger I would just use one of those things to just drag the soil and make it look all neat and new but I think the whole idea is that you want to sort of keep the soil underneath how it is because it builds up really healthy organisms with worms and everything and if you dig too much you're just going to disturb all of that and it's good to just leave the soil and just put new compost on top. We did put fresh compost on in the summer, so they're quite full. So if you have any tips about that, if your um, beds are quite full, other, apart from just literally emptying them, I don't want to like pile on too much compost. So I think basically I'll get rid of as much um, weeds and grass as I can. Do I get rid of the leaves? I'm not really sure. Or do I leave the leaves? Are they like good? Because they're, like, they're dry and they biodegrade. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. And see what I mean? They're not very neat. But I've got rid of the, the junk, basically. And I think my instinct, from what I remember when I was learning about no dig, is to just, you just put some compost on top and smooth it over. And that's it. <laughs> and if there are any really stubborn weeds, you can use cardboard. And if you're starting from scratch, you use cardboard. But if you've obviously got a bed already, you don't need to. This one is looking quite out of control, so I think I'll do this one next. Let me show you our compost. I don't think I've shown you it since it's all been fixed. So it was rotting before. So our gardeners used some pallets and reclaimed wood and did this for us, which is amazing, which means we can compost um, all the garden waste and all of our food in here. I feel like people get um, overwhelmed by the idea of composting and they think, oh, I have to do this big thing to start. And like, yeah, there's probably so much you can learn about composting and turning the compost and making it the richest compost ever. But if you don't have a clue and you want to be more sustainable, then just get, if you have a garden, just get a pallet or um, buy a compost bin online. You can literally buy them. I'm pretty sure, wait, I think in the UK you can buy them and then you get some money off from the council if you order them. I remember we did that in our old house. We bought a plastic compost bin just at the bottom of the garden and just throw your veg and your scraps in there and that's all you need to do literally it will turn it it will compost itself obviously it's an ideal thing to turn it and all that kind of stuff it just stops it from going to landfill because if it goes to landfill it will create greenhouse gases um, because the air gets trapped and then when the food composts it creates that harmful gas which then gets released so there's so much stuff that ends up in landfill that doesn't need to go into landfill because it would compost and biodegrade but it can't in landfill because it's trapped between layers of plastic and everything else and I genuinely think it's one of the best things that you can do at home and anyone can do it if you live in a city you can buy compost bins but you can buy basic compost bins where you just put some stuff in it you buy the stuff for it and um, it helps it decompose we just have a little compost bin underneath our sink and we just take it out when it gets full and that's it and it means that our bin doesn't fill up because before we did this which was a very long time ago probably university I've composted yeah ever since I've moved out of university I've composted yeah your bin is just so much lighter because you haven't got all of the 
food scraps in there. Um, we have all of our food scraps and then there's also, that looks like plastic, but it's actually home compostable plastic from Riverford and flowers and stuff. And it just decomposes itself and the fruit flies go in there. And yeah, I'm gonna try and learn a little bit more about composting in terms of like turning it and making it obviously usable for our garden. But I think that kind of with gardening, you don't wanna overcomplicate it or make it into this big thing, which then stops you from doing it. If you have a garden, then you can compost, <laughs> basically. And even if you don't have a garden, you can compost. It's a bit more tricky. In Brighton, um, we used to take it to a local garden. So we looked up um, where we could donate our compost. And this is probably something that lots of cities will have. If you look up, there'll probably be a park nearby or, or a garden or even a farmer's market that you can donate your compost to. And we used to just collect it. We had a little alleyway around the back, which was part of our property. And we just collected it there and just took it to the the garden once a week and that was it so yeah my, my little ramble about composting um i'm gonna start doing some gardening um and then go inside when there's not so much drilling happening and i'm going to plant um i've got a few little pots um like terracotta pots which i want to plant some things in and a really really cool um plantable calendar that i want to show you so it's a proper gardening video today i'm going to start by just trying to clear out some of these weeds and making this a little bit neater down here because i feel like once i start it's not going to be too tricky I've torn out quite a lot from here. I need to go get some more substantial gloves to get rid of this bramble that's made its way from here to here. But happy with that. Look at that big pile of weeds. Evening. It's only five o'clock and it is pitch black outside. And I know I probably sound like every British vlogger right now. Um, because every year we do this, they do the daylight savings, um, well, they turn the clocks back and then it gets darker in the evenings and we're like, whoa, that's crazy, it's so dark. <laughs> but it really does affect you, it makes such a difference. I obviously walk, walk Roxy usually after work um, and now it's dark and I'm a bit like, I need to change my routine because I don't wanna walk in the dark. Oh, sorry, that was really loud. Um, I don't wanna walk in the dark, um, so I think that Alex usually walks her about 11. So maybe we should alternate days or something. So we just both do a long walk every other day rather than both of us going out because of the dark evenings. Something very exciting happened um, this today, this day. <laughs> You're getting loads of sneak peeks as well. Cause I think this video is going out. It's like a bit of um, inception happening because I am obviously doing finishing touches in the kitchen. We're waiting for our tap to be fitted, which is what I'm gonna show you in a second. And um, I'm waiting to film. So I was waiting for that tap to be fitted to film the kitchen makeover video. So you're getting kind of sneak peeks by me vlogging in here, but it's the way it is. <laughs> I, can't, I can't avoid it. it. Makes it maybe exciting if you're looking and thinking, oh, I wanna see the final thing, because I will show you obviously very soon. Today we got our cooker. I've been saying quoker, but he told me it's cooker. I think if, because it's Dutch, and I've been saying it quoker, it's not quoker, it is cooker. It is a beautiful patina antique brass. The one we had before, I'll put a little picture, it was really bright gold and it was broken. The hot water tap would splash everywhere, it was in the wrong direction. I've talked about it enough and I'm very happy with this one. This one has an actual boiling hot water tap. I think it's the only one that does out of the boiling, the hot water taps because it's the one that has the patent, I think, because it was like the original one. So it has boiling hot water um, and also filter water. And I'm just really happy with it. So I love it. It's so simple. There's not all these extra things going on. And you just, I think you just tap it and then turn it and hot water comes out. And it's not splashy like the other one was. So there you go. That was the last kind of fixture that was um, to be sorted out in the kitchen. The last thing, actually no, the last thing that's tiny that we have to do is we have to put a little pole up above the arga because I want to hang our copper pots. I've got these lovely copper pots that my mum gave to me. I will clean them and I'll show you how I do that in a video and I just don't have time at the minute, but I will get to do that so they'll be all nice and shiny, but they kind of look cool, all vintagey looking, because they're all kind of old, 
So that still looks nice and they're all gonna hang along here with the hooks. So we're gonna hang that, probably we'll do that tomorrow. And then the room will be 100% finished and we can film our makeover video for you and show you, well actually no, I lie. We still have to do the window seat, but um, I'm not gonna wait for that to be done to show you because I've just put a rug on it and it actually looks like fine. So she might take a month or so to make it because the material's only arriving tomorrow. So I'm not gonna make you wait until the window seat's done. It looks kind of like how it will end up looking. So I'll just show you that in a vlog later on. I am gonna go get changed because I'm wearing tights underneath my dungarees and it's making me feel a bit sick. I've got really bad heartburn because I didn't sleep very well last night. I drank too much on Saturday. I was having a lovely time. I'm not saying I got like drunk or anything, but we just had one too many glasses of um, fizzy because we went to this event, like I said, for Naked Generation. <laughs> um, had, um, had a bottle of wine with dinner and then had a few glasses of fizzy and I'm just not used to doing that anymore. So on Sunday, I just didn't feel great and I feel like I could, didn't sleep as well because of it on Sunday, which is interesting. It really does affect you when you drink more than you usually do, especially at this age. It didn't used to affect me like this, but yeah, I didn't sleep very well last night. So I've got heartburn today and it's just like thrown me off. Also, I feel like just because there've been tradesmen here, we've had the electricians here too. They've just done all the electrics into the garage, which is great. And I don't think it's disrupted much. There's a tiny, tiny little hole in the corner of the kitchen, which you can't even see, um, but it's not disrupted anything too much. And that means we now have our electrics in there. And good news, the Velux windows, um, we've managed to find a solution. If you watched our garage conversion video, you know it's, there's been a huge delay. We've decided to not wait any longer because it's gonna just be, uh, we don't know how long it will take, could, could be months. And we're going to order two Velux windows that we can get now, um, which means we won't have three windows. We're gonna have two, but we think it's fine. It's gonna be bright enough and they're slightly bigger. So that means that they can just be done next week and we don't have to wait because he said, if we were to wait, it could be like 12 weeks. And no, I just want it done. <laughs> and this is just how it is at the minute. Anyway, I'm talking a lot to you. It's time for me to figure out what I'm going to have. I think I'm gonna have an apple ties because it's staring at me. Alex got me those yesterday. Cause I was like, can you please buy me a fizzy drink? <laughs> and I'm going to get out the leftovers. We've got chili leftovers and I think we're gonna have that for dinner. You wouldn't think I'd moved, but I just ran upstairs and put on my pajamas. These are hands down the best pajamas I've ever owned. I got them from Piglet in the bed when we ordered our bedding. They sell pajamas and I have quite, I don't think I've ever bought fancy or nice pajamas before. And I was like, I want some nice pajamas because I wear baggy men's t-shirts to bed and I feel like a slob. <laughs> and I put these on and I just feel nice and I love them and they're really soft. Um, so I'm gonna have lunch, dinner, lunch, lunch, dinner, dinner. <laughs> I'm gonna have dinner now. And then I'm gonna tidy up upstairs and then we're gonna go to bed. Oh, I'm gonna show you something actually that's kind of exciting that's upstairs. It's gonna go in our garage. So I'll show you that after I've had my dinner. Well, that was satisfying. <gasps> it's actually hot because the one before didn't make my tea hot enough and it made me a bit sad. I'm going to enjoy my cup of tea with a Nomo. No missing out, vegan free from ch caramel choc bar. I love these. My favorite is the salted caramel. Also the, um, the caramel drops are 10 out of 10. And I think I saw in the shop the other day that they were doing like a Christmas box. We were actually having this conversation. If you're a vegan chocolate brand watching this, because I'm sure they're watching, <laughs> um, there needs to be a vegan Christmas chocolate box. If you're not from the UK, I don't think this is a thing everywhere else, but in the UK, we go wild for our chocolate boxes at Christmas. So you've got roses, you've got celebrations, you've got Coronation Street, no, Coronation Street, that's the soap. Um, Quality Street, <laughs> it's been a while since I've had them, so I've forgotten. Um, you've got Heroes, 
So these are all the different chocolate brands and you get them in a tin and then it's filled with tiny miniature chocolates and you enjoy them at Christmas and you fight over them at Christmas and then there's always that family member who leaves the wrappers in the box and then the other family member who gets mad about it. Um, and they need to do a vegan one. I would love it if Nomo, I don't think it was a chocolate box like that. I think it was just like a selection box, but I want a tin, like a specifically a tin, because all these come in tins and then you can reuse the tin to store stuff. And that's like every single UK family pantry or cupboard has a uh, quality street or heroes tin with like biscuits in it or something um and yeah i want nomo to do that i would love for um what's the other brand raw halo i'd love on bar you need to get on i understand probably production wise it's maybe not worth it for these brands because it costs probably a lot of money to do and um they maybe don't sell enough i don't know but i feel like i feel like we need we need a vegan christmas chocolate box let me know in the comments down below if you agree <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna to go to bed now. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Oh no, I was gonna show you something upstairs. I'm gonna do that now, quickly. Nearly left you hanging. My tea's gonna be cold by the time I actually sit down and drink it. So this is my new pride and joy, our Peloton. <laughs> this arrived recently. We haven't used it yet, and I'll tell you why in a second. But yeah, we officially now have a Peloton to use at home, and the screen is massive. Wait, there we go. Look at the size of that screen. We have got this as a Christmas present to each other and we managed to get so much money off because Alex is such a genius at doing that. Um, I think it was like 600 pounds cheaper than it would be usually because, and I'll put on screen if this is wrong because sometimes I exaggerate numbers, but um, I think it was like 400 pounds off they were doing a sale and then there was 200 pounds off with a British Airways credit card, which we have. So we got loads of money off and it's something that I have talked about for like about a year that I wanted because we used to love cycling. You, if you've watched us for a long time, you'll remember that we went to Southeast Asia with our bikes and we cycled up mountains and I used to cycle all the time and it's a hobby that I haven't done much in the last few years just because of life being busy. And also because in Cornwall, I get a bit scared by the way that people drive around here and it's cold, <laughs> but I would like to get back into cycling in the summer. And I thought a way to do that was to have a bike at home. And I just heard such good things about Peloton and I just thought, why not? Um, let's go for it as a good Christmas present to each other. And I think it's gonna be invest an investment in our in our lives and when we went to do the garage um i thought having a peloton in there will save a lot of time in the gym and also alex doesn't like the gym and i think that this is going to be in fact in, in a lot of ways i wanted it more for him because he hates going to the gym and um he really loves cycling and i just thought this would just be something that i could see him really loving and using all the time and would really give him time in his day for himself because he doesn't often take time for himself. Yeah, I think it would be really good for both of us essentially is the bottom line, that I think it would just make both of us very happy and it will enrich our lives for better. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, one thing that was annoying was that we thought our bike shoes that we already own would fit. They don't, just FYI. And Peloton bike shoes are ridiculously expensive. Like you spend enough money on a Peloton, then you have to pay membership, which is also expensive. And then you have to buy bloody 130 pound shoes. Like I just think it's a rip off. So we bought some shoes, some um, road bike shoes from Wiggle. I'll link them below because if you also are gonna get a Peloton or a spinning bike and you can't find cheap ones, this is how you do it. Um, I have mountain bike shoes. So I bought road bike shoes and then you can buy the cleats separately. And there's a specific cleat that this bike uses. So I've done that and it was way cheaper. <laughs> I think it was like, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, rather than 130 pounds. And it means now I also have a pair of road bike shoes as well as mountain bike shoes, if I wanna use them when I'm cycling out and about. Um, so it's kind of like multi-purpose rather than me just getting a pair of Peloton shoes that I would just use on this bike. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna finally use it for the first time because that's why we haven't used it because we were ordering our shoes because I thought I could just jump on with the, with the shoes I have. Um, but yeah, so hopefully tomorrow I'll get to use it. And then when our garage is done, we can move it in there. And 
yeah, I can see myself using it all the time and I'm really hoping it gives me that kick of confidence to get back into cycling and part of me is just too self-conscious to go on a bike because there's not many women who are cyclists and I feel like people judge you and I don't want to be out and about on a bike going really slowly and then there'll be cars and then I don't know I feel like there's a lot of that is in my head but I feel confident going to the gym but the minute I don't have confidence going out on a bike outside so hopefully this will give me that confidence back anyway this video probably is just an entire video of me blabbing on so I'm going to end this um and I'll speak to you in my next one hope you enjoyed I guess I was chatty today <laughs> um love you all and yeah thank you for all your kind comments recently you're being extra super lovely and sweet as always and I really appreciate all of you because you make my heart melt you know when you leave those comments and I leave you a little heart like it's genuinely because you just sometimes I was reading your comments from the garage conversion video and some of them I was just like these people are just so lovely. I wish I could meet you in person. Anyway, bye-bye. <laughs>